welcome to our S'mores Wednesday today. We are super excited because we have Robert Tizerin joining us. And I can see his cute little face on screen, but I don't think you guys can yet. Can they? Nope. No. So we have Robert joining us. He's here to answer the question, some of the questions that you guys have sent in. So let's get started. We are live. Who is ready for some DIYs? I may be overfilled a couple of them. We want you to become empowered to know what you're purchasing because you know that's only going to help you be able to help your family. Welcome back guys. So I'm Retha Nesmith. I'm one of Plant Therapy Certified Aromatherapists and I have been lucky enough to know Robert Tizerand for, what do you think Robert? Probably five years four. or more, right? Yeah, um, probably four or five years I've known Robert. Um, I've got to even like have lunch and dinner with him a couple times guys. So just be jealous. No, just kidding. So we have Robert Tizerand on today and he, we had you guys send in some of your questions and he is here and is going to be answering your questions. So, um, Danny, can we put it on Robert? Cause they're done seeing my face, right? Okay. Robert is on. Robert is on. Yay. Robert wave to everyone. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So we, um, Robert Tizerand has been working with plant therapy for around four years now. He developed our Kids Safe line of synergies and he also works with us on our quality control process. Um, he looks over and tests every oil and he also reviews all of our GCMS reports and work with our aromatherapist to, um, to make the final decision on whether we will approve or not approve an oil to be sold to our customers. So Robert, now is your turn. Anything else that you want to add to, to introduce yourself? Um, well, I've been in the aromatherapy field for more than four years, um, uh, probably some, a little over 40 years. Um, <laughs> uh, if you want to check out my website, robertisaran.com, you can find out more about me. So I think that's all we need for, for today. <laughs> and am I just good to talk when I want to talk? Yes, I just will be flipping you back and forth. So like, uh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to raise my hand when it's my turn to talk you guys. So, um, Robert also is the author of essential oil safety. And I know a lot of our customers own that book, but if you don't just look at it because it's massively huge and it will hurt your brain to read it, but it's very informative and we are constantly looking back at that information. So it's really exciting. Okay, so Robert, there are so many people joining us. We have Michelle saying, hi, Robert. Jocelyn from Toronto. Um, Naomi says, welcome, Mr. Tizerin. Linda from Minnesota is joining us. Rowena says she loves our Kids Safe Synergies. Tina from Southern Missouri. Nora from Myrtle Beach. Um, Carol said, so excited to meet you with that, meet you in person, Robert. Um, <laughs> Let's see, Ashley, do we, oh, Donna from Virginia, who do we have joining on Instagram? So we could give a shout out to them for joining us really fast. Um, Butterfly Aromatics says, congrats on your recent marriage to you and Hannah. Yay. Um, the Furling says, hi from New Jersey. A lot of people are very excited to have you on, Robert. Yes, we're very excited for him. Okay, so let's just dive right into these questions. How does that sound? I have been to all of those places, except I have not been to Missouri. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm raising my hand so I can talk. Oh, that's fun. And he has been in the plant therapy here, right where we are, our warehouse right now. So if any customers want to come and visit our Twin Falls store, Robert has been here. So you'd be like stepping on Robert all sacred all ground. ground. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you guys have a lot of questions. And so let's just dive right into our questions. Um, Robert has kind of put these into categories. And so I thought since he is, um, I don't know if this is appropriate to say, but like the God of essential oil safety, right? Since he is the man that you go to when you want to learn about essential oil safety, I think let's just dive right into that category. And then we'll kind of um, check off some of our other categories depending on time. And we have about 30 minutes with Robert, so about 25 minutes left. So first question, um, one of the questions that we got, we have a, a couple of them. Um, is it ever okay to use essential oils neat, Robert? Yeah, um, yeah interesting question, interesting question. 
um, and, and it's quite polarizing because um, what, what, and whatever I say, whether I say yes or no, I'm in difficulties right away. Um, and uh, so I'd like to say, well, it depends. Um, is it ever okay? It it's, can be okay in the sense that it's not necessarily going to be causing a problem, causing an adverse reaction. Um, is it something I recommend? No. I, 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 you know, one of my number one safety tips is don't put undiluted essential oils on your skin. So then if you say, well, is it ever okay? Well, it may, it may be okay. Um, but that's not, it's not something I would recommend. So that's my, that's my best answer. My turn. Okay. So, I mean, kind of on that, on that. So you're saying, you know, maybe it will be okay, but is it ever actually needed? Like where you like to get the benefit, you absolutely need undiluted essential oils. Is, is it ever needed? Uh, you, you may get uh, faster and a more, and um, yeah, faster effect uh, and a better effect for, for a bee sting. But other than that, I can't think of anything. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thanks, Robert. Um, and I mean, you can dilute it and it works for bee stings too because that's what most of us do. So, okay, so another question that's very, I think it's going to be pretty similar, Robert, is is it ever okay to ingest essential oils? Well, I did a... Uh, um... I taught a safety masterclass recently and we had six lessons and one of the lessons was on ingestion and what we talked about was why would it be okay or not okay, not just to answer the question yes or no, but what are the issues uh, about ingesting essential oils? So um, is it ever okay to ingest essential oils? Yes, definitely, absolutely. Uh, we all ingest essential oils every day. Let's put that in context. Uh, most foods contain essential oils naturally. So every fruit that you eat, every vegetable that you eat already contains essential oils. And of course they're used in food flavorings as well. But then if you're talking about, uh, you know, 10 drops or 20 drops or 30 drops of essential oil, that's something completely different. So it really isn't a question that can be answered categorically, yes or no. Um, do you, you know, would it make sense for you to ingest essential oils in therapeutic doses? Uh, possibly, it depends uh, why you're doing it and how you're ingesting the oils. And that's why we did this class, was to talk about those things. Um, I would say um, another useful safety tip, a really useful safety tip, uh, is don't put essential oils in water or similar beverage and drink them. This is uh, not sensible, not safe, um, and not effective. There's way better ways to ingest essential oils if you're going to do it. Um, so that's, that's my you know, simple, simple paragraph on ingestion. Do you have to unmute me? Can I talk? No, there we go. Okay, so um, when I was going through my aromatherapy certification program, I had to write a report, um, and I did mine on ingesting essential oils, and Robert was kind enough to review that, as were other experts in the industry, um, and that can be found on our blog at planttherapy.com forward slash blog. The blog post is, Can Essential Oils Be Ingested? And it has... Um, some more information like Robert was talking about, you know, anytime you eat food, you are ingesting a little bit amount of essential oil, but, but that and food flavoring compared to using essential oils um, for medicinal purposes, ingesting them for medicinal purposes, those, are, those all don't fall under the same really answer or, or they don't all mean the same thing when we're talking about ingesting. So the blog post kind of talks about that a little bit more um, just for those who maybe want to take a look at it. And I'm, and you know, Robert has a ton of information on that as well. And he talks about the classes and he does lots of classes um, through his website. So when you take a look at that, you can be informed on, on those as well. And you have a Facebook page, right, Robert? Yeah, absolutely. It's Tissaran Institute without the Robert. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Rand Institute. Awesome. I hate it when I, I hear myself. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, so he answered the, well, in, when we were talking about using essential oils neat, one of the questions is, what is your number one safety tip? And you kind of talked about that, always dilute essential oil. So is that your number one safety tip? If you could only have one, and I know you're gonna hate that, but if you could only have one safety tip using essential oils, is that what it would be or would it be something else? Uh, my, yeah, my number one safety tip for topical use would be uh, always dilute. Um, can I add something? Can yes. I add something to that? Yeah. Uh, uh, don't put undiluted essential oils in your bath either, because that almost every time will 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 give you a bad reaction, uh, an irritation reaction. So that's also. Just want like all of our customers really fast to raise their hand if they've ever done that and have ever had negative effects because my hands up, Woo. you know, I've used essential oils my whole life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you know, and I, I think that we know it at least, at least I knew for a long time, kind of the basics of using essential oil safe safely, but, um, but you know, using undiluted essential oils in your bath and, and burning your sensitive little behind. I think it's happened to a lot of us, so don't do it. Um, okay, after an oil has passed its generally generally recommended shelf life, can it still be inhaled or applied topically? Uh, well, there's a little bit of, ca of a catch here. After it's passed its recommended shelf life, uh, if the oil is still good, then, then yes, you, you can use it, uh, but if the oil has started to degrade, to oxidize, uh, which means that it's chemically changed. Um, it's it's forms uh, what are called oxidation products, which are generally not very safe and not very nice. Um, once this starts to happen, then you shouldn't use it at all, um, maybe for floor cleaning, but you really don't want to be inhaling it either. So I, I would recommend not using those oils. me raising my hand. Um, one of my favorite parts of, parts of essential oil safety is the part that you talk about, the shelf life, the oxidation of essential oils, um, because it was interesting to see some of the reports that are in there and how much the essential oil chemically changed. Um, I mean, completely new constituents were made because of an, ox an oil going through oxidation. So I know a lot of people say, how do I know if an oil ha you know, is older, has oxidized. Um, and you can't totally know the full effect unless you do a GCMS report, correct, Robert? Because it, I mean, the constituents will compl can completely change. Um, but how can customers, without doing a GCMS report, how can they have a, a pretty good idea if the oil is bad and they shouldn't use it in any way? Well, the, the simplest way is that it smells different. Uh, because it's chemically changed, uh, it will smell different. Um, and essential oils generally lose a kind of um, uh, a liveliness, a zest, um, you know, a sparkle in the top note as, as they get older. And um, ideally you would compare an older oil with a, with a new oil that you've just purchased and comparing the two might give you a clue. Um, otherwise you'd need a mental reference. What should this smell like? Does it smell right? or not. And that's not always easy to do unless you've been sniffing for many years. So that's, I mean, that's the easiest way. That's hilarious. Um, so I have to wait. There's a delay in my response because I have to wait till I'm not muted anymore. <laughs> Danny's over there muting me. Um, yeah. So, you know, smelling different, or I think a lot of times we tell our customers like, if it's so plant therapy, and I know you worked with us on this, we have on our downloads page, page planttherapy.com forward slash downloads. We have a, um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Shelf a life. shelf life chart. Yeah, thank you. We have a shelf life chart on our downloads page and it gives, you know, like this oil is, is, you know, the shelf life is generally one to three years or two to four years or three to five years, whatever it is. And if it's 
quite, you know, if, if it says three to five years and it's six or seven years old, it might just be safer to just get rid of it. Um, you know, just to be on the safe side. But storing your essential oils, and I think we talk about this later, but I'll just add it really fast. Storing your essential oils in a dark, cool place will help extend the shelf life. So so if you have one that the shelf life's three to five years, but it's always been stored in a cool, dark place and it smells fine to you, you're probably okay to use it a little bit longer. Um, but, you know, just be paying attention. Right. Awesome. Woo! Okay. Um, so this question is not from me. I'm just putting it out there before I ask it. This was a, cu a cu question brought in by a customer. Um, well, none of these are mine, but I have to clarify that. Robert, will you please date me? No, just joking, maybe. So I don't think this customer is joking. Um, but I would like to know if there will be any updates and additions to the book Essential Oil Safety and when can we look for that? So answer the dating question first and then will there be any updates to your book and when can we look for that well as to the dating thing um uh i got married two months ago tomorrow exactly um and my wife is sitting a few feet away from me right now so i i don't i don't really see that this is a good time um for me to start dating other people uh might be a little early in the marriage to do that um so that you know that's um, and and I'm getting looks as well. So so I don't think that's on the cards. And uh, the other part of the question: uh, Will there be updates and additions to the book? The book will be revised. Essential oil safety will be revised. The plans for revision are happening now, but the publication of the revised edition won't be for about three years. At least, I'd, I would say at least three years. It's scheduled for, I think it's um, the fall of 2021. Um, and there will be a revised edition. So there'll be many changes made. Uh, one of the main aims for doing the revision is to make the book more readable, um, more easy to find information. Uh, the layout needs to be changed in some ways, I think. Um, and also the way it's written, because the book, as it says in the subtitle, was written for healthcare practitioners. It was not written for people who are enthusiasts. Um, but those are the people who, you know, are mostly buying the book. So it needs to needs to have some changes made to the way it's written. So it's easier to use. My turn. <laughs> um, a couple things we have a lot of a lot of people saying hi to hannah so hannah is robert's new wife and and hannah robert let hannah know there's a lot of people saying hi to her and congratulations to you guys on your marriage <laughs> lots of people are saying and hi um to you, no, that's okay. And then um, uh, uh, something else that I was going to say, well, a couple more I things is I remember easy. Robert what saying that like the day after, so the essential oil safety, it's the second edition already. And he said that the day after, I think it was the day after is what he said. Hi, Hannah. Um, he had mentioned that the day after essential oil safety, the second edition was, hold on. Oh, that's okay. I didn't know if she wanted to say hi, but but Robert had mentioned that like the day after the second essential oil safety edition was released, it was already out of date, right, Robert? Like there's so much information there's that's always changing, and um, and okay, maybe not the day after. I'm quoting <laughs> something that I shouldn't be quoting. Okay, unmute me and put Robert back on. <laughs> well, um, you. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an academic textbook and uh, it's an academic textbook publisher. And publication, their publication process takes 12 months. So after you submit the final, final, final manuscript and all the editing and everything is done, it's still 12 months uh, before it gets into print. And so by definition, academic books are always out of date when they, you know, the day they're published. Uh, because there's always new information. That doesn't mean that the information in the book is wrong. Uh, I just want to make that very clear. Uh, but there may be additional information that has come out since publication. Thanks, Robert. Um, okay, so let's see. 
Um, a customer says, I'd love to hear your thoughts about diffusing with cats in the home. I often see people say to avoid this, but you published an article on your website that seems a bit more open to the idea. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't know if I can be categorical about most safety issues, including this one, um, because yeah, cats in general are more sensitive to essential oil toxicity. Um, if you have a house cat that mostly doesn't go out and it's around essential oils all day and you're diffusing all day, that's probably not a good thing. Um, kind of depends on how much airspace there is, uh, how much you're actually diffusing, uh, maybe the health of the cat. But in general, I, I would say don't be too concerned that you're going to harm your cat necessarily because you're diffusing essential oils at home. And on that note, um, I mean, this is a question we get a ton from our customers and we do have aromatherapists going through um, some, some animal aromatherapy certification courses. Um, so just kind of as a, as a side note to our customers that we are getting closer for plant therapy to be able to answer some of those basic questions you have about use of um, aromatherapy with your pets. So, um, okay, so this one kind of goes back to your book, Robert. Why, and I, and I answered this customer's question on our Facebook page when they left it, um, but said that I hope we got time to address it and we will. So why does information in your book, Essential Oil Safety, sometimes differ with safety or cautions plant therapy lists? And um, one of the specifics that was mentioned was one of the oil of the month that we had, which was Magnolia Flower. Yeah, there, there is a simple answer to this one. And, and that is that for some of the oils in essential oil safety, um, the information I have on the composition of the oils uh, isn't very detailed. Whereas uh, when we're looking at an oil, when I'm looking at an oil, the plant therapy is selling, I've got a very detailed analysis of that particular batch, of that particular oil from that source. And so I've got a better idea of what's in the oil, what isn't in the oil, um, than you would get from simply looking at the book. And this, this actually applies really to every essential oil because uh, we know, I mean, we as plant therapy, we know exactly what we're selling, not just that we're selling a generic uh, geranium or rosemary or lavender, but we know exactly what's in the oil and what isn't in the oil. And so we can be more specific. And so that is really the answer to the question. Um, that we have uh, more specific and better information about the exact uh, batch, the exact type of oil that plant therapy is buying. Awesome. Oh, sorry. Awesome. <laughs> I repeated myself. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad our answers matched up. But basically, yeah, I had just mentioned that um, the information in your book is a, a general guideline or you know, for essential oils, but what, but when we're looking at plant therapies, it's batch specific, GCMS report specific. And we've even had that change from batch to batch. I know that that has happened with frankincense before, um, whether it being kid safe or not, because it's changing batch to batch. And so we've had to make a decision on what that looks like from a customer perspective and, and making it the easiest for the customer to understand. But, but we are looking at each GCMS report, every specific batch. And if anything needs to change based off of that, our customers are going to see the, the result. And that's why sometimes it can be seem a bit more confusing or doesn't match up with your book. So awesome. Um, okay, what makes some oils safe to use even though they have some constituents in low amounts that could be hazardous? For example, nutmeg or July's oil of the month, which um, is, what's today? Can I just say it? Yeah. July's oil of the month, which is sea fennel for those of you who have not received it yet. Oopsies, I'm gonna get in trouble, Robert. <laughs> so, why is it? Why can we still use them if there's some constituents, even in low amounts, that um, might be hazardous? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of ways of, of uh, addressing that question. Um, w one way to try and answer the question is that um, everything we eat, 
and everything we drink contains toxic substances. And I, I don't want this to sound scary because I'm not trying to scare you. Um, but uh, uh, if you go into uh, uh, um, a Starbucks in California, there's a notice on the wall or somewhere and it says, says um, uh, coffee contains acrylamide, which is a substance known to the state of California to be a carcinogen. But it's not just the coffee sold in California that's, can, that contains acrylamide. All coffee contains acrylamide because when you roast something, this substance forms and um, it is a carcinogen. And it's been known to toxicologists for years. Um, it's also in, in uh, breakfast cereals that are roasted, which is most breakfast cereals. It's in toast. Anything that's roasted or toasted contains acrylamide. So how do we view this? Uh, well, the um, I think it's the Superior Court of California just made a ruling uh, literally a few days ago, like um, Friday this week. And they said that breakfast cereals uh, do not have to have this warning on the package that they contain acrylamide, which is a carcinogen, because uh, breakfast cereals are good for you. That was what the California Su Su Supreme Court or Superior Court, I think it is, uh, ruled that, um, and this makes sense. They're not saying that about coffee because I guess coffee doesn't have as many health benefits. Um, but, you know, here's, here's a tough call. If you're in the, in the sort of toxicology consciousness, if something contains a toxin, does that mean that the substance containing the toxin is dangerous? It depends. Uh, but, but when we're looking at essential oils, it's, it, it, the, the call that we make depends on how much is in there, what is in there, and whether we're talking about everyone or kids or pregnancy. You know, it's, uh, it's, a call, it's a call that we make. It's a decision. It's a conscious decision that is made. I hope that makes sense. That was kind of a long and rambling answer. No, that's okay. Yeah, I, I think it makes sense. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's and there's, there's been um, enough studies on some of the constituents, not all of them, because, you know, some essential oils we're still learning a lot about, but, but there's been enough studies on some of the constituents to know what the amount is that's safe. So if it's under a certain amount, then we know it's safe, you know, if you, if you use it um, like you should be, and, you know, not like drinking the whole bottle or something. Um, yeah, so there's enough information to, to make those basic guidelines for, for a lot of the essential oils that we are making those guidelines for. Um, so on that subject, um, and you had brought up Kids Safe, Plant Therapy has, and, and Robert and I have had oh so many discussions on this, but we have a pretty strict Kids Safe policy um, that is constantly being changed and edited depending on new oils that might come in that we're like, hey, this has matched it, but we don't necessarily feel safe, so what do we need to change? Um, you know, because we don't want to market kids safe or whatever it might be. So one of the questions we received is why do oils listed as safe for children differ from company to company? Why? Okay. Why do oils listed as kids safe change from company to company? Well, that's not something I've looked at. Perhaps I should. Perhaps I should have. Perhaps I should. So, so I don't actually know who's saying what outside of plant therapy. Um, but again, that's, uh, that's a decision made by the company, um, uh, because there isn't, uh, there isn't a definitive list, uh, you know, uh, safety is always a matter of opinion, <clears throat> excuse me, safety is always a matter of opinion. Um, and so without a specific example, um, I can't really say more than that. My turn. Um, I do know because we've received a lot of questions on this. Um, I do know that sometimes a company will um, it will be brought to our attention that a customer says that a company is saying you know X oil and, and um, there's one that I'm thinking of. It has an orange label, but I can't think of the name of it. 
So, um, but, but it says it is marked as kid safe and then under their cautions, it says none known. And in Robert's book, Essential Oil Safety, under the cautions, it, it might say, you know, none known. And Robert, when we go to him and say, okay, is this oil kid safe? He will say, you know, it says none known because there really isn't enough information to know. So that automatically makes it not kid safe at plant therapy. If there's not enough information and research to really like, I mean, N not always definitively, obviously, because everything's changing. But if we don't have enough information known about that oil, sometimes we just simply won't put a kid safe stamp on it. Um, well, I so I know that that's kind of an example that customers have brought to us. And mute me because Robert wants to talk. Well, I know, Rita, you and I had a discussion about Davana oil. I don't know if that's the one you're thinking of. Yeah, um, we had a discussion about that because um, uh, there is there is no reason to believe that divine oil is particularly toxic, but we don't know much about the oil. There, there is very little testing has been done, and the same goes for the main constituent, Davinone. We don't know much about it. So if we're going to say this is a kid-safe oil, if we're making that positive st uh, state and we don't know anything about it, then we better not. We better not make that positive statement. So we're not saying it's dangerous. We're just saying we don't know that it's safe for kids. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Yes, Devana was. Go look. It has the oranges label on it. That's exactly the one I was thinking of because we did have that. And I think that question might have come up. You and me had that conversation even after we didn't market as kids safe because customers had had brought that up again. Um, so yes, that's exactly the one I was talking about. Um, okay, so um, another question related to kids, diffusing while pregnant and having an infant in the house, what precautions should I take? How long until a room clears of essential oils after diffusing? So do you have just general guidelines of diffusing um, when there is a pregnant person in the house? So we're we talking about pregnancy or the infant or both? What do you want to talk about? Um, I think, well, it says both. So <laughs> pregnant and having an infant in the house. Yeah. You need to uh, with that. Okay. Well, I'll go back to what I said in a rambling way earlier about diffusing that, that in general, uh, safety and diffusing does very much depend on how much and how often you're diffusing because that can vary a deal. Um, uh, but in general, I'm not too concerned about diffused oils. And the reason is that when you're breathing the air that has aromatic vapors in it, uh, the concentration in the air is measured in parts per million or parts per billion. It's very, very low. It's a very low concentration. As distinct from if you're inhaling from something close to your nose, uh, then a much greater proportion of essential oil is, is getting into your body from whatever device it might be. Um, so in the same way that we talked about cats, I would say, well, infants, yeah, they're particularly sensitive uh, to any type of toxicity. Um, and I don't think you want to be diffusing all day for sure. But that doesn't mean diffusing is unsafe. Um, if there's an infant in the house either. So it's, it's difficult to be really uh, specific about this or to have, you know, actual guidelines saying, well, you can only diffuse for so long and so many drops. But I think the sensible approach is to say, keep it low and you should be fine. Thanks, Robert. Um, and uh, I mean, we have aromatherapists on staff who can dive deeper into, you know, your specific questions and your specific situations and, and it can help. Um, like Robert's talking about, you know, it's hard to just give a, a general when there's a, a lot of components that make a difference. And we have aromatherapists who can dive deeper into that. Um, so always feel free to email our aromatherapist at aromatherapist at planttherapy.com. Um, and we also have on our downloads page, planttherapy.com forward slash downloads, we have a chart that lists um, essential oils that we feel are safest to use while pregnant um, because there's some that you'll want to stay away from. So we have a chart that, that lists that information. Um, okay, Robert, what, what are we looking on time? Do we have a, a, like one or two more questions? What does it look like from your end? Yeah, one or two. Yep. 
So let's see. Um, well, then I just get to choose what one's my favorite, I guess, huh? Okay, so we have, I guess we have maybe a couple questions that um, could kind of all be wrapped in, and that's, that's um, frequency or overuse. So we have questions um, related to like sensitization or having an allergic reaction um, and what is too much. So one person says, is it safe to use oils every day at a proper dilution? For example, if I use it in a body lotion at 1%, face serum at 1%, deodorant um, with essential oils in it, diffusing. Um, so what is too much? And then maybe kind of explain an, an allergic reaction versus becoming sensitized to the oils. Uh, okay, is it safe to use essential oils every day if they're properly diluted? Uh, it should be. Yeah, it absolutely should be. Um, the tricky thing is that you can never guarantee safety in anything. So, I mean, if you say, is it safe to drive a car or is it safe to fly in a plane? Well, much of the time, yeah. Um, but sometimes, no. <laughs> And uh, so with frequent use, I have heard stories of people who, in hindsight, were overusing essential oils over long periods of time and then had really bad reactions. And we probably all heard some of those stories. And that, that is an illustration that over, um, too much essential oil over time uh, can be problematic. But if you're using them in sensible amounts, you should be fine. You should not be having uh, bad reactions. Um, and you wanted me to talk about sensitization and allergic reaction. Uh, sensitization simply means becoming sensitized to something. Um, so when you become sensitized to something, then you can have an allergic reaction to it. Uh, so they're not in a way, they're not two separate things. Sensitization is part of the process of becoming allergic. So if you're sensitized to something, you are allergic to it. They are the same thing uh, in toxicology terminology. I think the word sensitization sometimes means, uh, or is taken to mean, it's not as bad as an allergic reaction, um, uh, like a food tolerance as opposed to food allergy. That doesn't really work for essential oils in the skin though. You're either allergic or you're not. It's black and white. Awesome. Danny's gonna unmute me. There we go. Um, so I know that so we sometimes recommend for customers who are concerned about this, um, we recommend you know every few weeks or whatever they might change up. So if they are using an essential oil on a daily basis, they might find another one that works just as well that they can switch in between every few weeks. Um, so it's not just that one for long, long, long periods of time, but they're using a couple that do the same thing. Um, so that, that's a recommendation that we do give to our customers if that's something that they're concerned about, especially if they're using the same thing on a, a daily basis. Um, okay, so one more question, and this is questions that I, I, I even see people posting it in our, in our comments. Um, What's your favorite oil, Robert? <laughs> I remember asking Robert this question the first time I met him, actually, and, and it was a very like long-winded question. So, Robert, do you have a favorite essential oil? <laughs> well, people have been asking me this for a long time. It's one of the favorite questions that I used to get asked a lot by journalists as part of an interview, and I've never had a simple answer. Uh, and, and so, in my defense, I love all essential oils. <laughs> Uh, but if I had to pick a favorite, it would probably be, uh, oh, I don't know, probably Rose. After the expensive one. <laughs> He's just going all the way in. Expensive. <laughs> you know, Robert, what's funny about that is, is Rose would be probably in my least favorite because I don't like the smell of roses. <laughs> but we're still friends, right? Well, everyone doesn't like the same things. Out of life. Um, okay, let's do one more question just because it's going to be a quick answer, I think. Um, are there still new essential oils being discovered? I think that's just a fun 
a fun question. So. Well, actually, I mean, yeah, I, I get contacted quite frequently by people in different parts of the world saying, you know, I, I'm growing this plant. Uh, it contains an essential oil. Could there be a market for it? Or um, we have space to grow plants. What should we grow? You know, there might be, uh, I've had contacts recently from Mexico and, and South Africa. The tricky part to this is if you really want to go into business selling a new essential oil to the world, then it's, it's, it's a risky business venture. It's a very risky business venture because you've got to invest money um, in developing your crop. You, probably over several years, you've got to do some experimentation to find out the best growing conditions, the, the, good, the best time to harvest it and the best way to extract it. And people do do this. Um, but then if it doesn't take off, you've lost out. Um, so this does happen, but it doesn't happen very often. And that's why we don't see, you know, very frequently new essential oils, uh, coming onto the market because it's a risky business. Uh, but there are more aromatic plants that are not distilled for their essential oil than there are ones that are distilled for their essential oil. Yeah, there are many, many thousands of aromatic plants that could be distilled. Uh, maybe that was a longer answer than you thought. <laughs> uh, no, that was great. Thank you. I think that that's exciting for people to to kind of hear, like you know, the the opportunity for essential oils, um, but then understand maybe the reality of it you know, most of, most of the time. Um, so awesome. Okay, Robert, any last words? Um, and then we'll let you hop off. There's still a ton of questions we didn't get to. Our aromatherapist will go through and answer any questions that we didn't get to that Robert wasn't able to answer um, to at least give you some information, even though it won't be coming from Robert himself. But, but is there anything else you want to say before we let you go and then we're gonna hang on here and do a giveaway and, and talk about our oil of the week but any last words or or wisdom yes. or anything from you yes <laughs> um right at the beginning i said i i was um uh talking about ingestion and i said well you know if you're going to ingest i i i, I use the word therapeutic dose and and i think Right after that, I said 10 drops or 20 drops or 30 drops. And I just want to clarify that uh, a therapeutic dose is usually just a few drops. So I just want to make that clear. I, I hope I didn't go, give the wrong impression that if you need a, a medicinal effect from ingesting oils, that you need to be ingesting 20 or 30 drops. You never do. That's, that would be way over the top. So I just wanted to make that clear. And thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Robert. We're, I, I mean, everyone's freaking out. They're so excited that you joined us. Um, we appreciate all of your knowledge and that you take the time to share it with everyone. And um, yeah, that's all. We're, we're glad to have you in. And, and I am lucky enough to get to talk to Robert on a very regular basis. So <laughs> sorry, everyone else. <laughs> okay, Robert, thanks for joining. You are welcome to hop off. Have an thanks. awesome thanks. evening. My pleasure. Robert's gonna be going to bed soon. Thanks, it's only eight o'clock. <laughs> it's only eight eight o'clock. <laughs> okay, maybe that would just be me going to bed if, if it was if it was me doing it. Okay, guys. So who is ready for? Let's do Danny. Do you want to do our well really fast? What do you guys think of that? That was awesome. That was awesome. I have so many people. Thank you, Robert. Goodbye. Nice to meet you. Um. I have a couple of people saying they missed it. All the videos are saved so you can go back and, and watch it. Um, one of the best live videos, great to hear from an expert. We do have another live video that we did with Robert um, where we specifically answered questions related to, related to kids safe questions. Um, so you can go back through our live videos and find that. That's, is that on YouTube? Do you know, Danny? I Maybe, maybe Jesse can find the link to that one and also post it, the other interview, live interview that we did with Robert, because it was also really informative. So yeah. it was, it was about, it was a long time ago. It was, but, it was quite a while ago. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So oil of the week. All right. Can I do the oil of the week 
song? Yes, you can. Yes. La, 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 oil of the week. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so oil of the week. It started today. It is German chamomile, chamomile German. Um, this is a kid safe oil, 15% off for one week. It's 15% off with Spotlight 10, number 10. Um, you can purchase any size to get the 15% off. So this is a this is really good for relaxation. It's really fantastic for your skin as well um, and for discomfort, pain. So it's a really overall um, really useful essential oil. And it's blue. So who doesn't love a good blue oil? It's a deep blue. Um, so you can go to our website, learn more about it, get 15% off and through Tuesday. Awesome, oil of the week. Great, and I love that our oil of the week that you can purchase any size now because I think it makes it super convenient, especially for some of the more expensive oils. Um, it makes it really a, a lot more affordable and, and convenient for it. Um, okay, so who's ready for a giveaway? Woo, as if Robert Tizerin on live wasn't enough for you guys, how we spoil you. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, okay, so giveaway question. Okay, Jamie says, yes, please. I was just looking for the previous interview and couldn't find it. Jesse, can you find it and link to it? That would be very helpful for our customers. We'll get that linked for you guys so you can watch that first one. Um, giveaway question. You will have until 5 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time to answer this question. And we are giving you... Should we give away the oil of the week? Something. Yeah, let's do... Let's do five people to win um, the five mil German chamomile. Five people. So your question is, do you have any other essential oil safety questions? Are they supposed to say yes or no? Tell us. Leave us the question. If you have yeah, any other essential oil safety questions, let us know what it is. If you don't, then just put no and you'll still be entered. <laughs> <laughs> um, and for those of you guys, we, ha we had so many questions and we had some really good ones that we were unable to get to. Um, but we have an amazing staff of aromatherapists. So you can email them at aromatherapist at planttherapy.com. You can leave your questions on social media and our aromatherapists are there answering your questions. Um, so any that we were unable to get to, please feel free to, um, and if we don't respond to them in the, in the comment section, because there are so many, um, please feel free to reach out to our aromatherapist and we'll make sure and get that answered for you. Um, so yeah, let us know if there's any other questions you have and that will get you entered into the giveaway. We are going to be choosing five winners. You have until 5 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time to, answer, to tell us what any other questions you have. Um, and then we'll be choosing five winners to win a five mil chamomile German. Okay, so last but not least, that's it for S'more Wednesday. I didn't make my s'mores today, but that's gonna be popping in my mouth after this because I don't think I've even had breakfast yet. It was a crazy busy morning, you guys. Um, thanks for joining. We will be back on Friday. Well, don't forget to share and like this video because I know I saw so many people tagging their friends um, saying Robert Tizerin, he's on a being interviewed or whatever right now. So so be sure to share this video if you, if you found it informative and educational and you think that there's friends or family members who would enjoy it as well. Um, and then don't forget to join us on Friday. It's our last field trip Friday for this month and we are going into our fulfillment department. So you're gonna see all those lovely people who are packing your, all those lovely people who are packing your orders. Um, and we have a lot of like exciting and fun surprise giveaways that we're going to be doing. So we have lots going on. So don't forget to join us and that's going to be at our regular time, 9.30 a.m. Mountain Daylight on Friday. So I will see you guys for the field trip Friday. Have an amazing rest of your day this Wednesday. Um, and thanks for joining guys. See you Friday.